love about scripture and what the Kairos course has taught me is that God's message of salvation is a theme that runs throughout scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Not only that, God's heart for all nations is a thread that runs throughout the Bible. You see, it's not enough to say that mission has a solid biblical foundation. It does. But we also need to see that the Bible itself has its roots in mission. And the Bible is the product of God's engagement in the world through God's people for his ultimate purpose for the nations. And we come to the climax in Revelation 7, 9, where representatives from every nation, tribe, people and language will be standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And you know what uh, Revelation says? This is a multitude that no one can count. Can you imagine that? Such huge numbers. And this is the final harvest. But you see, God proclaims his plan leading up to Revelation right back in Genesis. And one of the scriptures I'd like us to just focus on just as we start this short devotion is Genesis 12, where God is proclaiming his plan to um, Abraham and he establishes his covenant with Abraham. God promises to make Israel's name great and to bless Israel. And the second predominant part of this covenant is that Israel will be a blessing to all nations. Then this scripture, this covenant is paralleled in the New Testament in Galatians 3.29, where Paul tells us we inherit this covenant as the church because we are Abraham's seed. I love the way scripture does that, the parallels between Old and New Testament. Then if we come to Exodus 19, we can see how God carried Israel on eagle's wings when he delivered them from slavery and bondage in Egypt. It's called the eagle's wings speech. And in this chapter, Israel is called to be God's treasured possession to participate in his priesthood and be a holy nation. God's priesthood was a role in which Israel was to function on behalf of the kingdom of God as a mediator to the nations. And as priests, they were to represent God and mediate his word to the nations of the world, almost like ambassadors to the nations of the world. Kingsley referred to the watchmen in Isaiah 62 who will never be silent until righteousness reigns in the land. The watchmen fulfill this priestly role. Then Ben also talked about the priestly calling using the parallel in the New Testament. This is something we inherit as the church as 1 Peter also highlights. 1 Peter 2.9 points to the very same words. A royal priesthood a holy nation, a people belonging to God that we might declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. What a beautiful scripture. Benj also quoted that. And in the same way, Israel was called out of the darkness of Egypt. And the word declare here indicates something of the message we are to bring to the world. So what are our priestly duties? Okay, let's look at them. To serve the people without expectation in, of anything in return. We're called to be servants in the world, to serve. To intercede on behalf of others and not have our prayers focused on us alone. Intercession is crucial. To offer spiritual sacrifices and surrendering all we have to him. To share the priesthood with others. Praise God, we're not alone in this. We are part of the family of God. We don't operate as a one-man band. We're called to live lives set apart in holiness and integrity. The priestly duties are also to proclaim God's goodness to the world and also to spend time in the presence of God. And you can see here the missional nature of the priesthood and how this influences our prayer walking. 2 Corinthians 5.20 also talks of this ministry priestly ministry calling as ambassadors for Christ with a message of reconciliation as God is making his appeal through us and as we pray for our neighborhoods we are appealing to God for the reconciliation of man to God 
for healing, for restoration, for salvation, for blessing for the people of the city that we live in. I'd also like to talk about Psalm 67, as, especially as we're coming up to Pentecost. I think this is a very crucial psalm where God continues to pursue his purposes. This is a psalm I have often prayed for the least reached peoples of the world and the people that I work with changing the pronouns to the third person. And we can also use this psalm to pray for our neighbourhoods, our communities and our workplaces. And this is what it says. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest and God our God blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. It's a great prayer to pray for our neighbourhood. This psalm is derived from the blessing which is found in Numbers 6, 24 to 26, the Aaronic blessing, which has been sung in so many languages across the world during the pandemic. And it's something we can continue praying. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Many of you have shared it on Facebook, sung in different ways. And I know I've shared this with my friends in Farsi and in Arabic. As we sing or pray this blessing over our friends, our family, our neighbours, even the nations. Do you know there's a subtle challenge in this um, psalm as well, in these words? We are called to be that blessing and peacemakers to the people in our lives and in the, our neighbourhoods. And this is the royal priesthood and how we represent God and his word to the world. Did you know, I find this really cool, that Psalm 67 was probably sung at the Feast of Pentecost, also known as the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot in the Hebrew calendar. And this feast was about the ingathering of the first fruits of the harvest the wheat harvest, 50 days after Passover. It also commemorates the anniversary of the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. And every year the Jewish people renew their acceptance of God's gift, the Torah. I love the way they say it's God's gift, the word. And beautifully, God uses this day of the Feast of Pentecost, following on from the resurrection of Jesus and later his ascension, to do what? to pour out the gift of his Holy Spirit on all nations. In Acts 2, we read of a violent wind, tongues of fire, and the proclamation of God's word in multiple languages to the many Jews who were present in Jerusalem for the feast, or coming from different nations. 3,000 people repented that day and gave their lives to the Lord. What a revival in one day. Don't we pray for that today? 3,000. You know, these were the first fruits of the church. This was the birth of the church, of the spiritual harvest, of the ingathering that was to take place as recorded in Revelation. This harvest to come will be greater than any previous feast or even any revival. I quoted that earlier from Revelation. And deliberately, the psalmist here is referring to the ingathering of the wheat harvest. The first fruits of the season is a symbol of the spiritual harvest to come from every tribe, tongue, nation, as I said in Revelation. God gave the psalm to Israel and also to us that we might ex experience real change in our lives. We need to have repentant hearts and to walk humbly with God and an abandoned devotion to Jesus if we are going to see a revival in our day. The blessing of God comes so that all the ends of the earth might receive this spiritual bless, uh, benefit. What happened materially with the wheat harvest 
was only to be an illustration of a blessing to come with much wider and larger dimensions. The psalmist longed for and deeply desired that God, who was the King of Israel, the King of the nations, might be acknowledged as Lord and Saviour to all the families of the earth. Shouldn't we long for anything less? This is my prayer. May the flame of the gospel that is shown in Genesis and the call to be a holy nation and a royal priesthood fire us up to proclaim the gospel in the days that lie ahead. May we announce to every single nation on the face of the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you know that same Holy Spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago is available to us today and is with us and is in us so that we can do the work of the gospel. Ben has already talked about and Pastor Steve has talked about missional communities and that's something we would aspire to as the church, that we would have missional communities around our city. But it starts with prayer. It, there needs to be a foundation of prayer laid first. So in our prayer walking, let us remember three things. One, how we're blessed to be a blessing, a covenant that we inherited from Abraham. And you see, when we recognise the extent of the blessing in our lives, and when we are thankful people, we are then more able to pray for others that they would receive that same blessing that we have received without bitterness, without jealousy, without prejudice, but with hearts of compassion. And secondly, let us remember our humble calling as a royal priesthood, a mediator to the nations and those around us, and as ambassadors for Christ in our communities as we engage in intercession. Thirdly, let us also remember the gift of the Holy Spirit and God's word to enable us to fulfill God's purposes in our lives. So we look forward to this month of prayer walking and we really encourage you to take up this challenge, take up this task of walking the streets of our city. Not just for the month of June, though, may it become a habit that when we go from A to B, that we will continue with the prayer walking. Remember to please do email us at missions at bccleads.org if you're planning a prayer walk. And if you want to hook up with other people in your area, we can put you in touch with them. We also want to hear your testimonies and what God has spoken to you through this time. So please do keep in touch with us, contact us, and we will find ways of sharing those testimonies with the wider, with the wider congregation. I'd just like to remind you of Global Day of Prayer that's coming up this Sunday. A great opportunity to keep on praying and praying for the nations. We have the nations in our midst, but also we have got family and friends who are overseas too. So do come along 6.30 on Sunday. Please register at Eventbrite. If you go to the Eventbrite website, you will be able to uh, search for Global Day of Prayer and it will come up. So do join us in the building at church 6.30 on Sunday for Global Day of Prayer. Mm -hmm.